Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing better than I am. Um, I have had to do one of the things that car dealers never like to do, which is to buy back a car that we've sold because there seems to be no way of getting around the problem. Sometimes we'll buy back a car just because it seems like the easiest solution, but in this case, I think it's probably our only choice, unfortunately. So I thought, you know what? Seeing as it's a bit of a bummer, You'll enjoy that. I'll sort of tell you about the situation, show you the car, and explain what lessons I should learn from this, really. So let's head outside and have a look at the car. Right, this is our Mercedes ML. I believe it's an ML320. I don't even know what year it is because the eagle eyed among you would have noticed that it's got a Northern Irish number plate on it. In fact, this featured somewhere in the background of one of our weekly videos before, and I said it was an Irish plate a little slip of the tongue as I always do. Some of you might remember it and I don't think I was speaking very fondly of it to be honest and I sort of was like I think we've taken this in part exchange, don't know why, didn't really like it. I'm not that fond of this era of Mercedes ML. I don't know why, just a bit, I don't know, just generally speaking they're usually quite reliable and incredibly to me, probably because I'm just not that fond of them, they still seem to have quite a good value to them. When someone sort of spotted this on the forecourt, I think they sort of inquired about what would be the trade price. Dan sold this one, I think. And we, we sold it for £4,995, which to me that car doesn't look like £5,000, but it was the market value. I didn't really want to sell it because it, I just think it looks old. I'd rather have nicer, newer, kind of less problematic stuff here. But you know, it's hard to turn down money sometimes, you know, when someone's there saying they want to buy it from you. It almost feels rude to say no, but that is that is what we should have done probably. Do you know what I'm going to do first off? We'll do a quick vehicle score check on it and we'll get some information on it, find out how much MNT it's got, what year it is, what model it is, and then we'll have a look at the mileage and some of the service history and things like that. I keep vehicle scores saved as a little tile on my phone because I use it day in, day out because I can enter our registration, which is Oscar November Zulu 1044. And it gives us, A, a score from 1 to 999, based on the car's age, MOT, history, mileage, and a load of other factors, but it's just really handy for a load of information. Some of which I requested, like the ULES checker. Now, I don't think this is gonna be ULES compliant, but tap of a button, we can find out. It's not, what a shocker. It tells us it's a Mercedes-Benz ML. It's got an 83% MOT pass rate. There's absolutely loads of stuff we can check. I always start by looking at details and performance, which is where we'll find our mileage tracker as well, which is really handy. You want to check that that mileage is always going up or staying consistently the same, not dropping down like it might have been clocked. And then we can tap to reveal our performance. So it is an ML320 CDI Sport automatic, 221 brake horsepower, top speed of 134 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in 8.6 seconds. A 12 months tax cost is 710 pounds. Some of these tax costs are getting obscene now. now. Let's have a look at the MOT history. It passed in June 2024, so it's got probably 10 months MOT on it with brake pipe corroded or covered in grease, brake pipe covered in grease, and an oil leak but not excessive, what was on there. So not too bad, really. I didn't even say the score's 577, which is pretty average. In fact, it's 63 above average. This kind of gives you an idea of the car, I guess, if you're looking to buy one. Speaking of which, if you are going to buy a car, then I highly recommend you do one of Vehicle Score's history checks because you can check for many things, whether it's got finance outstanding on it, whether it's been seen at a salvage auction, whether it's been written off, and a load of other things you want to know. The checks start from as little as three quid for their salvage-only check, or you can do what they're now calling their full history check, the Ultimate Plus, for £11.95, but don't forget to use my code SHIFTYMETAL20 and you'll get 20% off, making it just £9.58 if my maths or memory is correct, which probably neither are. Let's have a hop inside, we'll have a look at the mileage and we'll talk about some of the problems with this car. One plus is that we do have two sets of keys. We have power fold mirrors, which for some reason on Mercedes don't open until you open the door. Well, why they do that, I don't know. I suppose it makes sense in some way. We've got half leather, half Alcantara type interior. Well, I was going to say like a kind of black walnuty effect dash, but it is very much an effect. You can see that it's a film on there, which looks horrendous. Uh, our mileage. 
I did notice actually when I fired this up just to move it around just a minute ago and when I moved it over to this side of the building this morning that it didn't really want to start very well and it puffed out quite a lot of smoke when it did. I imagine it's probably got a glow plug fault or something which I'm sure can't have been the kind of situation when we sold it because we just wouldn't sell a car like that but you know this is a problem with old cars that things are going to go wrong with them and as a dealer you tend to end up on the hook so should we just see what happens when we try and start it there we go jason looks down the back now we've probably got a big cloud of smoke coming out i think it is just glow plugs and it's unburnt fuel that's why you get a cloud of white smoke incredibly that's not actually the issue we had to buy this back for i don't think he even mentioned that it might not have been a problem until it's been sat around for a few days we do have an engine management light on here don't know what that relates to but i'm going to assume it's to do with the gearbox because that's what's killed this car really it is an automatic you get your column shifter type thing on here and what seemed to be happening was that driving along in normal automatic mode it would just decide it really liked first gear or third gear i don't even know which one it was and it would just stay in that gear and it wouldn't change out of it which you know is tricky when you're on the motorway and you want to get off and it was stuck in like second gear or something from what we've tried to check out we think that it is just a sensor in a gearbox. In fact, we have sent it to a gearbox specialist. Um, I think we've sent it to a couple and no one wants to work on it. For some reason, no one wants to change this sensor which lives inside the gearbox. We wouldn't have minded paying, you know, what it costs to do it. I think, I think to be fair, we would have minded because I think the quote we got was about 4,000 pounds, which just writes this car off. Why would you do that on a car that you only sold? for 4,995. Maybe there's gonna be some Mercedes experts in the comments here who can tell us what this sensor is, whether it's a common problem. Because I always thought these were quite bulletproof, to be honest. Didn't say what the mileage was, did I? Let's have a little look through, if I can figure it out. Oh, 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 didn't mean to start it. There we are, 87,000 miles. Probably one of the reasons why we decided we would sell this. But there we are. This is a lesson to me that if you've got a car that comes in, you don't think it's quite right, you think it could be problematic, that you're probably better off trading it out ASAP before these problems develop, because let's just have a quick look. I think we've got the original PDI in here. So we've had this for about three months, just over. So I'm sure a lot of places would be like, oh, it's not covered under warranty, but you know, it's covered under Consumer Rights Act for up to six months. And, you know, we wanna be fair with everyone as well. The mileage hasn't even done that much, to be honest. 85,802 miles and it's now on 87,021. So not even 1,500 miles. Anyone would be upset, wouldn't they, if their gearbox started, you know, locking into gear and no one wanted to fix it. So yeah, we've got a load of invoices and, oh, there goes the other key, but who cares at this point? So only had three keepers. I didn't look what year it was, did I? 2007, I thought it was. It's our previous PDI. Just had like 700 quid's worth of brakes and we put all new tires on it as well. As part of this deal, not much use to anyone. Interestingly, Gear Change, who's our local gear box kind of specialist, um, they did a, a service on the gearbox a year ago to, well, 14 months ago. Now, I don't think the service history in here is like incredible, to be honest. So were they just being thorough and careful car owners or was there already signs of problems? So they thought, oh, do you know what? We'll get a service done there. And maybe that worked for a while until problems rose again. I don't know. Um, it doesn't really matter to us now. The long and short of it is I'm not even gonna drive this. I just you'll have to take my word for the fact that it hangs up in gear quite frankly i don't want to get stuck out on the barrow road amongst all the holiday makers with this stuck in gear i think the only sensible thing for this now is we'll probably just send it off to auction as it is we'll just have to swallow you know the loss on it i can't remember what we paid for it i should be able to dig that out but i've got a feeling we paid maybe two and a half thousand pounds for it so Maybe at the time I was like, yeah, well, you know, good news is we doubled our money. Lesson learned. No more stuff like this that comes in part exchange. It's going off to people who are interested in fixing stuff like that. So frankly, the guy was great. The guy was really understanding. He wanted us to fix it, but we just couldn't find anyone to do it. And he wasn't kicking off, which can be an issue with this sort of stuff. You know, like, I need my car. You sold me a dodgy car. Clearly, we had no 
clue that it would have been. I mean, why would, if you knew there was problems with a car, why would you sell it to then just refund them the full amount three months down the line? To be fair, the thing is, even now that we've bought it back, even if someone came to me and said they could fix the gearbox, would I want to do it or would I just want it out of my life? And to be quite honest, I just want it out of my life. Don't want to be fixing stuff like this. And if the quotes we've been getting are about £4,000, then it wouldn't be economical. Even if it's £2,000, we'd still be just, you know, making our money back maybe if we sold it for 5,000 again. And then something else could go, well, I mean, it's still got a weird starting issue, probably needs glow plugs and stuff. Sometimes you are better off just cutting your losses and getting rid of it. You may see this in an auction near you soon. Be warned, is it worth it? I think not. Anyway, that is it for this video. A bit of a different one for us. I, you know, normally we take it out and drive it and whatever, but I just thought I'd give you a little rundown of the real ins and outs of a used car business. What happens? Sometimes you've got to be very selective with your stock. It was too easy to jump at a two and a half grand profit there, but we haven't got it anymore. In fact, we've lost money. Lesson learned. If I'd taken that at 2,500 pounds, sent it straight to auction three months ago, I might have got my money back or maybe a little bit of profit. You never know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. If you haven't already seen it or you haven't already got involved, you have a limited amount of time, I'd say, to get involved with our BMW 730D raffle. You can win it for just one pound. There's a maximum of 12,000 tickets available at one pound, but you can get a discount. If you buy 20 tickets, you will get 10 for free. And you can also use a code TOBY10 and get another 10% off. I think around about 60 or 70% have sold already, roughly a month ahead of schedule. So I think we're probably gonna be doing that competition early. If you haven't bought your tickets already, now's the time to do it before they run out. And don't forget to subscribe. It would really help me out. It would help me feel much better about this massive loss I'm going to take on this. At least I've got you on board with the channel. And in return, I'm giving away a £4,000 watch that I'm giving away completely for free just to one of my subscribers as soon as we hit 100,000. That's it for this video. Hopefully the next one will be a little bit more cheerful, but I think the next video is on that Range Rover and you can imagine how that's probably going to go. Maybe there'll be a more cheerful video next week. See you then. Bye-bye.